Hello everyone, welcome to problem 2.32 David Griffith's Electrodynamics. Um, let's just get right into it. So this problem statement says that we have two positive point charges, QA and QB, which each have a mass of MA and MB. They are at rest held together by a massless string of length A. And then we cut the string and the particles fly off in opposite directions. It asks us to find how fast each one is going when they are far apart. So I have a diagram here. We have um, you know, two charges, QA, QB. I wrote the masses there. And um, I set a distance D. The problem says distance A. Same thing. And we can um, solve this problem by sort of analyzing the, the problem, the, the energies and the momentums of this problem. Um, and that'll kind of give us a solution. So I kind of just wrote here initially, you know, the force, there's a force on each one at the beginning. You know the force on a, the force a acts on b is this. This is just the the Coulomb force, and the force that b exerts on this is this this. But it ended up not really being useful. But I did write it out just for um, clarity's sake. But you can think about um, the total energy of the system. So in general, the total energy of the system is going to be the the kinetic energy of the first char uh, this charge plus the kinetic energy of this charge, plus the potential um, created by these two charges. And, <clears throat> which uh, I think, hang on, let me just double check real quick. Yeah, so um, that's kind of what I've written out here. Um, we have the potential energy uh, created by these two charges and the kinetic energy terms. So that's just in general, but we need to analyze the situation, the energy situation, you know, right when the string is cut and also um, when the charges are far apart, at, you know, long after the string has been cut. So right when the string is cut, the particles have no velocity, right? Um, there are forces exerted on each other, but right when the string is cut, the, the moments after, the particles haven't quite moved yet. They're just getting ready to move because of the forces between them. So in that case, you can simplify it because the velocities are zero and the total energy is just reduced to the potential created by those two charges, which is QA times QB over four pi epsilon naught D, which where D is the distance between them. Now let's analyze the situation when they're far apart. When, when, when you're far apart, um, the distance between them, I said R in this case, because it's no longer d, d was the fixed distance, but when you're far apart, r is infinity, and the potential term, if, if this d was infinity, would, would go away, and you just have the velocity, the kinetic energy uh, term, so the energy is just um, the sum of the two kinetic energy terms, one half mava squared plus one half mpvb squared, and due to the conservation of energy, the energy at the end has to be equal to the energy in the beginning. So you can equate uh, this and this, E1 and E2, um, and that gives you um, sort of one set of equations to work with. And before we do anything with that, let's look at the conservation of momentum. So, so the conservation of momentum says that MAVA um, in the beginning, well, if you think about it, in the beginning, the potential is zero, uh, sorry, not the potential, the uh, momentum is zero because the velocities are zero um, since the momentum is the mass times the velocity. And so that suggests that um, the, uh, the momentum, I keep thinking potential, the momentum MAVA is equal to MBVB. Oops, did I go too far? <laughs> I think I did. And when the charges are far apart, um, I just rewrote this, um, and I initially had a minus sign here, which I believe I fixed with writing that positive signs. So you might see some positive signs written throughout. Um, but this is another equation, this, this sort of uh, conservation of momentum gives us this equation to use. So we essentially have two a system of equations. We have E1 equals E2, and we have that equation where I haven't quite plugged everything in yet and we have MVA is equal to MBVB. And so 
the first equation, we can solve the momentum equation for one of the velocities in terms of the other velocity. So in this case, I solved VA in terms of VB. So VA is equal to MB divided by MA times VB. And given that we have, you know, at this point, it's just, um, you know, it's just solving a system of equations, right? You eliminate one variable and then you plug, the ver you know, plug that into the other equation. So I've solved VA in terms of VB, and then we use the energy equation where I plugged everything in. So this is E1 is equal to E2, the potential. This is the beginning energy. This is the ending energy. And so 1 half MAVA squared plus 1 half MPVV squared. The sum of the kinetic energies is equal to the total potential energy in the beginning. If you plug in what we found for VA in terms of VB into uh, here, you get one half MBVB squared plus one half MA times um, positive. I forgot to fix that. Um, MB divided by MA times VB whole squared because that's what um, VA is. So you whole square that and set that equal to the, the other side. Then solving even more, doing some more algebra. Essentially, we get. Um, mb squared over ma squared times vb squared and one of the ma's here cancels and so that's all i did on that step and then the next step i factor a one half and a mb over ma out and when you do that i multiplied um, this first term by ma as well as this second term so i multiplied both terms by ma to be able to factor this term out and get this nice sum here of ma plus mb if you can't see how I did that, multiply both terms, um, multiply everything um, by MB over, or MA over MA, uh, which you're just multiplying it by one. So it doesn't really do anything. And yeah, so you can simplify this down to here. And let me just double check something real quick. Yeah, so once you've got it in this form, then we can easily solve for VB. So, you know, you multiply two by two and, you know, flip this. So it's gonna be MA divided by MB on the other side and divide by the sum here. So what that looks like is this. So VB squared is equal to this, right? That's after you did the algebra there. And then take the square root of all that and that gets you the velocity of particle B in terms of the masses and in terms of the charges. So we, we have everything we need. And I just use the distance A as the distance when they're far apart. So that's what that A is. Um, I think I said, yeah, where the A is equal to the distance far away up here. So I replaced that down there with A. So once you have VB, well, initially what we had was VA, the velocity particle A, in terms of the velocity particle B. Which, so we, we found that the VA is equal to MB divided by MA times VB. If, now that we have VB, you can plug that into there and you get that the velocity of charge A is equal to MB divided by MA times the square root of all that. Or what you can do is move this um, quotient in, inside of the square root and when you do that, each of these terms becomes squared. If you move this inside of the square root, that'd be mb squared over ma squared. And if that would multiply by this over here, and that would essentially flip the fraction around, because that'd be mb squared divided by ma squared times ma over mb, and they cross cancel, and you essentially get the same thing where the masses are flipped here. And so that's what um, or you know, or you can leave it in this form. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing, but that is the velocity of charge A, and it's in a very similar form as the velocity of charge B. So I hope that made sense. Um, please let me know in the comments below if if something just does not click with you. But um, yeah, I hope this uh, video helps you helps you guys out. And if you guys want the full PDF solutions of these problems. Um, you can subscribe to my Patreon account down below and get access to all the digital PDF solutions of these problems. So thank you guys for watching and um, yeah, have a great day. Thank you.